and welcome back to another video and this is my haul for April 2024 this is the sci-fi box that came in I have taken the roof off with my dress on and everything but I haven't actually rocked in the box yet and then on top is a something I ordered from eBay so let's get on to this haul unboxing Okay, first, I have this, well, obviously I went to Japan recently and I took like a bunch of spending money with me, but I didn't end up actually spending everything because I didn't realise how cheap everything in Japan was going to be, so I didn't even spend half of the money I ended up taking with me. So what I had left over, I did order some stuff from eBay. The first thing that I ordered is uh, the My Happy Marriage Nandroids, which I already have sitting on the shelf over there. And the next thing I ordered was two Hana Tume magazines, and they're both the 50th anniversary editions. There has two variants. There is the white one, and there is the red one. The red one has all the female characters on it, and the white one has all the male characters on it. I did order both, but the male one hasn't arrived yet, but this is the one with all the female characters on. So, it, and this one came with extras as well. Obviously, the male version also comes with one of these anniversary books. This is the gold one. The male version comes with the silver one. It also came with an art card here, which the male version also comes with. And these art cards are exclusive to the um, female version. But yeah, it's currently in this packet. I'm going to... Um get the tape off my fingers so I can open it up. So this is the um, little anniversary booklet. It's got a bunch of pictures in here of Hannah to Yume series that have been published in the magazine throughout the years including Fruits Basket and Yona of the Dawn. Obviously this one concentrates more on the female characters. It does have some of the male characters in here though. Let's skip beat. And then this is the art print that it came with. It's like the picture that's on the front cover, just without any of the text. It's just all of the currently publishing Hannah Tume series main female characters on it. I do recognise some of them, obviously, but not all. Down the bottom is obviously Yona and Kyoko from Skip Beat. This girl here is from Timon Kun's B-side. The one up in the corner here is the dark... The dark revelations of the reincarnated Vuness, I think it's called. Oh, the dark history of the reincarnated Vuness, she's from that. And this, there is, I think this is the girl from Otaku Vampire's Rough Bite. And I do know the series this girl is from as well, but I don't know her name. Yeah, that's the art card. And these are the art cards that show Hannah to Yume series throughout the years. The, I'm surprised I have looked through these. I'm surprised that Kami Summer Kiss didn't actually get one considering that was quite a popular Hannah Tume series. But it, that one doesn't get a lot of But this one is Grass Mask, which is a series from I think the 50s or the 60s. I don't know what this one's from. This is another old one, but I know some of them, but I don't know them all. This one has got a husky on it, which is cute. And there's this one, which again, I don't recognize. This one is from a series called Baby and Me, which is by the same creator as New York, New York, the BL series, which was also a Hannah to Yume series. This one is Angel Sanctuary. The, um, Karu Yuki one. This is Hannah Kimi. I don't know what this one is. 
I also don't know what this one is. Then we have Fruits Basket. It's Toriel. Then we have Skip Beat. Then we have Yone of the Dawn. I am aware of this series. I think it's a student teacher series, but I'm not aware of the name of it, but I have heard it talked about before. Same with this one. It's I'm aware of this series, but again, I don't know what it's called. I just hear it talked about quite a bit. Then we have Tamon Khan's B-side. And then we have Spring Storm and Monster, which is from the author of Cheeky Brat. So this one recently got an English license announcement from the Empress. And then we have the magazine itself, which has a very nice viewing cover. It's like, it's holographic. Uh, it, it looks very nice. Now this is the red version. I have ordered the male one as well, as I said, it just hasn't arrived yet. It's currently still in transit. This is the back. And this is the spine. This is very cool. And I will be keeping an eye out for the art book that will be released for the 50th anniversary, which will be released for the ex ex the the expedition the exhibition that they will be doing for the 50th anniversary they will be releasing an art book which will be exclusive to that exhibition but there probably will be some resellers online right bit like there was for the Yona one so I'll be keeping an eye out for when that comes out but yeah this is very cool uh, I really like it I found it on eBay. I got the male one from the same seller. Just I bought them separately because it wasn't uploaded until a couple of days after and I didn't realise that's just going to end up selling them both. <laughs> but anyway, that's the Hannah Tume. And now to get on with the box. The sci-fi box. I actually actually ended up buying 30 volumes this month which I don't like to go over 25 volumes at most but there was just so much released and yeah I got more than I should have probably but there's some paper bookmarks Ooh, that's cool there's a dragon these must be new I haven't got the dragon there's another dragon this oh that must be a new one as well. Kind of like a space station face. I've got the bunny. There's a lot of dragons and a lot of this one. I haven't got this one. And I haven't got this one either. It's like a boat in a tall building. Oh, I haven't got this spacey creature thing. What are these ones? Another dragon, another face. Ooh, I haven't got this one. There's an astronaut with a goat and another goat. And the bunny again. This one, this one, this one. More bunnies. And um, another face. So yeah, I, these are the new ones. Okay, there seems to be quite a lot of... Let's start with um, this one. The... And if I can get it open. Maybe they'll just... That works. So first in here is Virgin World Volume 2. I enjoyed the first volume and I think this one came out recently. I don't think volume 3 is out yet, but yeah. Virgin Love follows a woman who is a virgin and she wants to be, find a relationship and no longer be a virgin. So she joins up with like this sort of event where they have six single people living in a house together to see if anyone can find love. And she joins along with this guy who she knows from a bookshop that she frequents. So yeah, they join together into this house and she's kind of got 
an interest in like one of the guys and then another the guy's kind of interested in her. Yeah, I enjoyed volume one. Next up is a highly anticipated release that I've been looking forward to. That's Tales of the Tender Family. This is a new shoujo like mystery suspense for thrillery series that came out from One Piece books. So we have this Tendo family who's like very mysterious and like they have like a lot of secrets surrounding them. And we have this girl who's meant to marry into the family but she doesn't want to. And then she, I think, is found dead in a river. And then this girl is now pretending to be her and is married into the Tendo family in her stead. I don't know if we know why she's decided to do this in the first volume. I, I haven't read it yet or whether there's like... Some sort of mystery surrounding why she would do that as well. Anyway, it sounds very good. And I'm definitely looking forward to reading it. Next is Inspector Volume 19. This is the latest volume of Inspector. This is starting a new mystery as the previous mystery ended in Volume 18. The previous mystery, as I said before, wasn't my favourite. I, I didn't hate it, but out of all the mysteries so far, that one wasn't my favourite mainly because of all the sword technique that it has to go over and explain throughout most of volume 17. Volume 18 did pick up a bit though, but I'm just hoping this mystery will be slightly better. But I do love Inspector and I do love uh, Iwanaga, she's great. And yeah, now I can go and go with this one because this one is going to be easier to pull out. I'll probably just spill them like I did last time. Well, it doesn't seem to be working as well as it did the first time. But there is some sticking out. There we go. It's happening. They're coming out. Okay, okay I'll just grab one out of this pile. Lonely Castle in the Mirror, Volume 2. I absolutely loved Volume 1 of this, so... I think it's five volumes in total, but... Definitely need to continue this series. It was so good. It follows a middle school girl. I don't remember her name, obviously. But she's been bullied quite harshly, so there's definitely trigger warnings for bullying on this series. And she ends up... Find, the mirror in her bedroom ends up reading to this castle... And there's a bunch of other middle schoolers there and they're all tasked with finding this key. And if they find this key, they get their wish granted. But they only have a year to find it. And if they don't find it within the year, the castle will close and they won't be able to go back there. But finding the key will also close the castle and make them not be able to go back there. So at the minute, they're all kind of just using the castle as like their escape because all of these children have like problems in their lives at that they're like trying to get away from and yeah it, the first volume was very good this is based off a novel and the novel is available in english so i might try pick that up at some point but like, there's also a film and i don't know where i can watch the film but i would like to watch the film but yeah great series here we have volume 15 of mal i not that long ago read volume 14 but these are coming out very quickly because I'm pretty sure Mal is a weekly release chapter wise, so that's why the volume 10 will come out quicker than something that will be like a monthly release. But yeah, there's volume 15. And then we haven't had a volume of this in a while. We have Seaside Stranger volume, what volume is this? Six? This volume six or seven? Um, six. Volume six. Yeah, this. We go. Volume's not that infrequently, but um, we must have caught up with Japan because it's been a while f since the last volume came out. Yes, I do enjoy this series. Yeah, it has been a while since we've gotten a volume. And here is um, Spaki Chow, Lonely Planet Volume 6. I also enjoy this series. It is an age gap. I still enjoy it. I like Mika, Mika Yamamori's other stuff too. I think out of all three of Mika Yamamori's series, this one might be my favourite. Then in the clear mirror at dusk and then Daytime Shooting Star. Daytime Shooting Star might go up 
the more I read of it, though, I've only read three volumes so far. But yes, I think this one is my favourite out of her series. And this is volume six. I think it's 12 in total, so I think this is, like, halfway through. Or is it 14? I think it's 12, but it might be 14. It, that might be halfway through. Anyway, um, is this... Yeah, this is a separate one. Let's grab this. It does have more in it, though. Let's get that into it. I might just be able to untape it and... Yes. That worked. Well, I could put a 5 volume 4. I enjoy the series. It's Sumori Shita. It's who has did A Sign of Affection. And yeah, I'm still liking it, so I'm still picking it up. So yeah, there's volume 4. It's two introverts, a girl who's bad at talking to people and a boy who's bad at talking to girls. Who's right, that's their romance and it's very cute. Here is volume 10 of Mint Chocolate. This one is a step-sibling romance, but they kind of liked each other before becoming step-siblings and they became step-siblings as like 17-year-olds, so it's not like they grew up together or anything. a good one. Right. Here we have um, I Can't Reach You volume 7. This one has also been a while since we had a volume with this one from what I remember but this recently we got a live action series on Netflix. It's on my watch list but I haven't yet started watching it but yeah. I like the manga. It's like it's a slow burn. That is actually a slow burn. It does take them a while to like admit well for one of them to admit that they like the other one and then for the other one to kind of come to terms with that and starting to realise if he might like him back. Yeah, it's very, it's a slow, it's like, there's no smut or anything, so it's two high school boys. Just one, their childhood friends, one likes the other. The other one doesn't realise the other guy, one likes him and he doesn't know whether he likes him back or not at first yet yet. I enjoy it and I'm definitely going to give the live action a go at some point. Then we have one of my favourite series recently. My Girlfriend's Child Volume 4. I'm very excited to read this. I love this series a lot and I'm very interested to find out what happens next after the end of Volume 3. It's definitely a new favourite series. And next, this is a new one. This is Daisy Jealousy by Ogretsu Tanaka. I'm pretty sure that's the author of Escape Journey. Although I might be wrong about that, but I think it is. But this is a one-shot. It's a BL. It's wrapped in plastic, so it's going to be spicy. Masaki has always loved video games and would do anything to break into the industry despite his silly, happy-go-lucky attitude. He's always putting his head down to be the best game designer around. And Mazaki's certain he is, at least until he meets Kaname, a stoic genius who tops him in just about every way, including in the bedroom. It doesn't, it doesn't actually say that. With his skills, smarts, and sweet smile, Kaname has Mazaki swearing in a pool of envy, admiration, and maybe even love. Will Mazaki be able to overcome his jealousy and learn how to love Kaname? He probably does top him in the bedroom, though. Looking forward to this one. If this is the author of Escape Journey, which I think it is, I do like her series. Both going back, Prince Volume 5. It's still continuing with this one. As I enjoy the series. I enjoy the anime. It is not a great relationship. It is kind of toxic, but I like it anyway. It's, it's fun to read about. And I... It's also the author of um, Imakai. This is another new one here. This is a new Jose series. I think it's five volumes long. It's being released by Tokyo Pop. This is called Since I Could Die Tomorrow. And this is about a woman who I think is in her 40s. Yeah, she's 42. And she's it's about basically her life as a middle-aged woman in her 40s. And things women that age go through. I'm pretty sure she's starting the menopause and stuff. Sarko... Hona is 42 
years old and single, and she works hard at a film production company. One night, all of a sudden, her heart palpitates and her body goes cold. Is she going through the menopause? Navigating your 40s is hard, but when an old friend from her hometown reaches out to meet you up, Falco realises that maybe having someone to talk to about ageing could be a very good thing. After all, you never know what might happen tomorrow. You don't get a lot of series with older characters in their 40s. A lot of series have either characters in their teens or in their 20s when it usually comes to Jose. But yeah, it's not a, very often you get a series with characters who are in their 40s. So this should be an interesting read. And now the big one. The big one. Oh, I didn't expect this to be plastic wrapped. This is the white and blue between us. This is a BL one shot. Is this the author of? No, I don't think it's the author I'm thinking of. I think this is... no, it says it's for fans of my summer review, but I don't think it's by the same author. I don't think it's that author. When I White Ride tears apart two high school friends that the two boys will have to confront their past in order to repair their future in this moving, dramatic, be a one shot perfect for fans of Seaside Stranger and my summer view and I hear this on the spot. I love I hear this on the spot. So I'll probably enjoy this. But yeah, I didn't expect this one to be plastic wrapped. I thought this would be more of like the sweeter sort of non smutty BLs, but I'm looking forward to it being plastic wrapped. Yes, yeah, it is 18 plus. Well, that, that is actually a nice surprise. I didn't think it would be smutty, but apparently it is. Yeah, it's two childhood friends, so obviously there's a lie between them, and then they um like each other, but it's plastic wrapped. That's, a, that's nice. Next here we have the final volume of Children of the Whales, volume 23. I love Children of the Whales, and the series has ended now. It says right there, final volume. I'm looking forward to seeing how this series concludes. The artwork in this series is stunning. It's some of the best artwork I've seen. I love Abby Umida's art style and the covers especially. The covers are fantastic. And I have to one last time with this series mention how much I like how she draws hands. The hands in this series is on the covers are just great. So we have Chakro and Rikos holding up the mud rail. This is the first time we've had, no, this is the second time we've had multiple characters on a cover. Volume 22 had four. But yeah, I adore this series. Here's volume eight of Alice in Borderland. Is this upside down? It is upside down. And here's volume nine of Alice in Borderland. And this is the final volume. I wasn't meant to get volume 9 this month. I was meant to get it next month. But I thought it's the final volume. I might as well just grab them both now. Yeah, I really like the live action. And I like the manga too. And I, I think the manga ends in a similar way to the live action. But yeah, the spines combine together to make like a city scene. And yeah, these are the final two volumes. And I'm looking forward to getting to those. Next is Cherry Magic Volume 10. I do like Cherry Magic. And it's pretty obvious in the cover what's going to happen in this volume. So, yeah. Looking forward to that. Now, here's a good one. Cthulhu Volume 6. Apparently we get answers in this volume. Like, as a volume so far... far <laughs> As of volume 5, I am starting to piece together what is going on and what the truth is and, like, what is happening. I'm not sure if I'm 100% right, but maybe this volume will give me some, like, more spec, some more answers as to whether my theories are right or not. But, yeah, I think I've sussed out what's going on after reading volume 5, but I might not be correct. But looking forward to getting into this one and possibly getting some more answers. Next is a new shoujo series, which was, no, it wasn't a digital first. Gazing at the Star Next Door, or Stereo Next to Me, which I think is the Japanese title. 
It's by the author of Van the Purest Beauty, which is a series which is digital only. It's about a girl who lives next door to an actor. I think he's an actor. And I think she likes him. But obviously he's an actor and he can't just go out with anybody because of scandals and stuff. Jackie is a pretty normal teenage girl. Since they were kids, she had a thing for her best friend, Subaru, who's fast becoming the hottest young actor in Japan. But Subaru threatening to slip away, Jackie has a decision to make. Will she finally shoot her shot or give Subaru up to his adoring public? It says it's for fans of In the Korean Mirror at Dusk. Yeah, looking forward to reading that one. Then we have... There's quite a lot of new series in here. I ordered quite a lot of volume ones that I probably shouldn't have ordered. But I did. It's Akko and Bambi. This is the author of Hoi Mia. This is, I think, a full coma series. And it has, like, colour in the panels. But it's about a guy who moves into this apartment not realising that it's haunted and that there's a ghost girl living there as well. It's, I think it's a comedy. It is full coma. But I did like Hoi Mia. So I wanted to give it a go. Here is volume 2 of my Rub Sick Life as a 90s otaku. I enjoyed volume 1. I've heard that this volume's better than the first one as well. But yeah, this follows a woman. A woman, I think she's also in her 40s. And she is reminiscing about her time as a teenager in high school in the 90s. Because she has a daughter now and her daughter's openly otaku. And she's like, when I was a teenager, if you were openly otaku, you would be shunned. So she had to hide the fact she was an otaku while she was in high school in the 90s. And it's basically just her reminiscing about that time and how she likes this boy. But she doesn't want to reveal anything about being an otaku to him. Because obviously he's mentioned in passing a couple of times that he does not like otaku. And then she also has this pen pal who she writes to. Yeah, looking forward to that one. Next up is a new steamship title, which is not actually plastic wrapped. It's this, it's, it says it's 17 plus. Is there not anything sexy in this first volume? I thought there was, because there's a lot of controversy around this series. So I thought there was going to be sexy light from volume one, but it's not wrapped, so perhaps it isn't. But this is Before You Discard Me, I Shall Have My Way With You. I'm pretty sure it's like an isekai. So no apologies. Angie's the daughter of a duke. Is in love with Crown Prince. Uh, Rusi. Yes, the man she's been betrothed to since they were both children. But before they can wed, Angie's is hit with a bombshell. The person she likes doesn't return her feelings and wants to break their engagement so he can marry his true love, a different noble woman with a sweet and innocent demeanor. Angie's is more than just heartbroken, she's angry. Her sweet rival might not be sweet at all, and her brother prince has wrecked her future. This means war both in politics and in bed. So I think she tries to have her way with him, so she, he can like her again, or something like that. I know there's a lot of controversy behind this one, and I'm intrigued. Because, yes, I will read stuff that is controversial. It, sometimes it makes me want to read it more. <laughs> Is another steamship title. I've heard this one's a more of a cute one. This is Hero for the Shadow Hero. This one is under normal circumstances, the servant girl Nana would never cross paths with the war hero known as the Shadow Hero. However, he has an incurable disease, Nana has the power to cure it. Does this one catch? Nana can only heal her patient by using her virginity to him. Does that mean she can only heal him once? Or could she continue to hear him by having sex with him, even though she's no longer a virgin? Can the two of them possibly enter such an intimate engagement? Or will the first time she has sex with him cure him, and then she won't have to do it again? I'll, I'll have to read to find out. But it's an incurable disease. So maybe she just has to keep it at bay by having sex with him. I will find out when I read it. Next is... um. I got reincarnated in a B.O. world of big man boobs. This one sounded hilarious. It's about a guy who's obsessed with boobs. All he wants to do is touch boobs. And then he ends up dying and getting reincarnated into a world of big boobs. 
but it actually turns out to be a BL world of big man boobs. So now he's surrounded by these big muscly guys who have massive man boobs, and he doesn't know what to do with himself. And I thought it sounded great. This is a two-in-one, I think. Though I'm definitely looking forward to reading that. I don't think it's smutty. It is 16 plus. But I don't think there's any, like, sexual stuff going on, at least in that first volume. Here is Ice Guy and the Cool Girl Volume 3. I enjoy this one. It's a sweet office romance between a guy who is the descendant of a snow woman and then his co-worker who he has the feelings for, but... She doesn't realise he has feelings for her, and it's a very cute one. The anime's cute, too. I would recommend it. It is quite skinny, though, because it's Square Enix. This is another skinny Square Enix next. We have the final volume of I Think Our Son Is Gay, volume 5. This one is about a mother who has suspicions about her son being gay, and she's trying to be supportive of him, but her husband is not so, like supportive obviously her husband hasn't realized yet but she has and she wants to support him but yeah it's very cute i would recommend it and then we have two more we have nina the story bride volume three which i haven't yet read volume two it's like one of the last four volumes i have to read from my last haul so yeah i have to read that one first <laughs> So, yeah, it's a fantasy Jose series about a girl, Nina, who is an orphan and she needs to be the replacement for the um, royal princess, priestess, who has recently died in a carriage accident and she needs to take her place because they have the same colour eyes and marry the prince of the neighbouring kingdom. And then we have Medalist Volume 1. This is a... Um, a new sports seinen. It's about ice skating. It follows this 10 year old girl who wants to be an ice skater but I think her family's against it and then she joins up with this guy who agrees to become her coach and he's like training her to be an ice skater. When I was in Japan, when I was in Shibuya, they had like a pop-up shop with like med a medalist pop-up shop with like I got a picture taken next to the standee of these two, but they also had a bunch of cool and very pretty, like, um, badges and key rings and, like, these. They were, like, rectangles, and it's it's a bit like the, um, um, the My Love Mix-Up one I got. It's, like, a grass, sort of plastic rectangle, and it has the character on it, and it has, like, glitter inside that move around, which were very nice, too. But I didn't get anything from there because I hadn't watched Medalist or read Medalist, but... I bought the first volume so I can read it now and see if I enjoy it. But yeah. It should be interesting. I did like Yuri on Ice, and which is ice skating. And I did like Sugar Princess, which was also ice skating. I wasn't keen on Night of the Ice, though. But I'm, I'm pretty sure this one will be good. I've heard a lot of like praise around this one. And yeah, and that's everything I bought. All 30 volumes in this big stack, which is upside down. And I'm going to have to put this away now, if I can find room for it. It's always a struggle. I right, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you for my reading vlog, maybe Sunday sometime around the weekend. And yeah, I'll see you then, and bye!